Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek from your favorite website that you've bookmarked, thelandgeek.com. And today, I'm honored, privileged, and very excited to actually have one of my coaching students on that has a very unique background in my favorite area of business, marketing. Jim Lewis from Dana Point, California, has built three major sales organizations for three different selling direct selling companies over a span of 20 years. He has recruited, trained, motivated, and supported over 40,000 distributors in 12 countries. He is a big marketing hitter. And Jim, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to, uh, to talk with us about marketing today. Happy to be here, Mark. Thank you. So let me ask you a question. How did you get started in, uh, in marketing? Well, I guess out of necessity um, into the marketing side of things, I was a business major out of school, uh, got the, the typical kind of corporate uh, sales job here in Orange County, California, where I live. And, uh, you know, this is back 20 years ago. I, I just felt like I was a little bit sick and tired of sitting on the freeways or in a cubicle working for somebody else. And I just had more entrepreneurial blood in me that was not being expressed. And, and uh, I, I remember very distinctly the day I literally just quit my job cold and uh, began working from home. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to be around my kids. I wanted to be, or my, my at that time, one-year-old daughter, who's now in college, by the way. But um, I, I knew I wanted to be a part of my kid's life and to have freedom and flexibility of calling my own shots and, and being an entrepreneur. I figured if I was going to work hard for somebody, I may as well do it for myself Yeah, and, uh, and yeah. reap those rewards. And out of a necessity to build whatever it is I was going to build and, and grow, I had to become a real student of marketing and sales techniques and then just get in the trenches where I've been ever since. And um, it's just been a heck of a great journey. <laughs> Is, isn't that so funny? Because when I, that's really how I started. I, you know, I think babies do something to your brain. Yeah. Because my son was one when I made the leap from uh, being a, a business broker to just going on my own. And uh, I remember, you know, being just scared you know, every single day, like, what am I doing? And, uh, but kind of just, you know, pushing on because, you know, you got this little baby at home, you gotta, you gotta take care of and things just worked out. It's, it's weird. I mean, what was that? Was that really the impetus for you? Like, I just want to spend time with my kids and I'm just going to work hard or. Exactly. And I, I kind of put myself in the mindset of, I burn my bridges, I burn the boats and there's no going back. You got to make it work. And, Pick a field you want to dive into and then just be the very best you can be in that field. Right. right. And and that took it took a lot of work. It took a lot of long hours of studying and implementing things and not being afraid of rolling up your sleeves and, and jumping in. I mean, for me, there was just no option. There was no way I was gonna go back to any kind of a a, a corporate job or gig. It just um for me at that time and and going forward. This is what I wanted to do. It's great. That's great. So you somehow, how did you find me? How did you find <laughs> each other? You know, it was kind of funny. I was uh, uh, putzing around on Fiverr, one of my, my newest little obsessions. I love Fiverr. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I searched it or, or somehow, but your little thing came up. And I'm a big real estate fan. Um I have uh, a, a brother who's a developer in Utah, and we do a lot of projects together. I do a lot of consulting for him, and and so I have a, a you know, kind of a, a real love for real estate. And I thought, well, that's an interesting title and course. And I, I bought it. 
I bought the thing and read through it and studied it. And I think that night I looked at every one of your YouTube videos. I pulled down all your podcasts and I'm like, I got to meet this guy. Yeah. And um, I think I sent you an email or something as I was leaving town to go back to, to Utah. I, I go back and forth. And um, and then we connected on the phone. That's a right. Days later, <laughs> and I and I remember, and I'm and I'm looking at his at, at Jim's marketing background, and it just kind of hit me because I'm like, is, am I hiring him, or is, is he hiring me? Like, <laughs> uh, how is this going to work? Because you know your skill sets are exactly what um, I really need in in my business, whether it's you know FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. Or the landgeek.com because mm-hmm. you can have the greatest land in the world, you can have the greatest, uh, you know, teaching course in the world, but if no one knows about it, what good is it? Mm-hmm. So marketing is is such a core piece of the of the business puzzle that you know, and you've got to constantly be trying new things and iterating. And, and honestly, I just you know that's really what I want to spend ninety percent of my time is on marketing. But I'm so to the mindset that if I can find someone who's better at it than me, do that. Mm-hmm. And Jim's clearly better at it than I am. <laughs> well, I remember showing, that conversation. Uh, who, ad, and I was like, whoa. Am I hiring you? You hiring me? I remember that conversation. I remember thinking, well, I, I don't know, Mark. All I know is we just needed to at least meet each other and, and get to know each other, and we'll find out where this goes. <laughs> right, right. So you started showing me some of your Craigslist ads that you were doing for your brother, and I was blown away Thank you. by – uh, the marketing piece, you know, it was the the titles were were you know catchy. Were yeah, this is something I want to click on. Then you'd read it, and it was it was literally like you know the difference between the New York Yankees and Little League. So everyone else's ads on Craigslist are like Little League, and then all of a sudden you've got this professional ad with these gorgeous pictures and this incredible copy that was so compelling. I'm like, oh man, this is the guy. Jim's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, thank you very much. I, uh, you know, that's just, it's been a journey of, of learning and studying this stuff like crazy. I mean, you and I have talked, I mean, you know how many late nights I put in and um, I, I, I want to get to a point where I'm, I'm the best. I want to be the best and have the best and have all, I, I don't know, just maybe an obsession of, of just really standing out. And that's kind of a marketing thing, I suppose. But so when it came to like creating some ads for some of my brother's properties that um, he's busy as a developer and, and has to wear so many hats, one of the last hats he gets to wear is the marketing hat. So I come up and I'll, I'll sit with him and spend a few weeks and it's good for us to spend time together. We're best friends and my mom lives up there. So it works out really well. And I can just sit there and, and create this stuff, uh, utilizing a lot of the ad copy background that I have. And as well as a lot of the technical things behind the scenes in Craigslist to number one, get your ad visible and, and eye catching as well as, incredibly attractive. You know, the internet has turned into more of a visual palette. It's it's more visual today. Right. Um, you know, Facebook, same thing. It's more visual. And there are still so many ads and so many people, they just, they don't use photographs, just the basic photographs. And there, there's a lot of technical things that um, you and I have talked about where you can, you can really enhance that visual display. Uh, combined with your ad copy, combined with uh, a little bit of easy, basic HTML coding to to make things really stand out. And the whole point is when people are cruising through, that I want them to find my ad and I want them to be attracted to it and click on something or make a call. Right. So, so you have a goal in mind when you're making that ad. And so for your your brother's properties, it's I want them to read the ad and pick up the phone. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So when it comes to um, other areas that you're marketing, let's say, um, you know, silver coins, mm-hmm. um, is that always the same goal or is it, is it different each time? Is the call to action always the same? Pick up the phone or is it an email? Is it a landing page? What, walk me through your process. It, it, I, have to, I put a lot of thought into that question when I create something. 
And a lot of times it is, I want to think like what the prospect is thinking. Are they going to want to call me? Are they going to want to just go to a website and register? In the silver business, for example, I was consulting for uh, up until recently, we would send people to an opt-in page um, through the Craigslist ads and and then they would opt in, give us their name, phone number, and email address. And I got literally thousands of these things. And that created a prospect list, which then I could drip on. I could, um, I, I actually, we had a system where we would actually call these people and and have very short, brief, non-threatening kind of conversations. I mean, non-threatening meaning like a, a non-salesy kind of call. Right. And it broke the barriers down. It created bridges and friendships, so to speak, a, at least a business relationship. And now when I email them or communicate with them, they at least know who I am and, and, and there's um, interaction. So in the case of my brother's things, for example, uh, I created sense of, sense of urgencies of property. There's one of a kind or there's only a handful of this unit available. First come, first serve, you know, call me. Now, here's something else that I found that's been kind of interesting is um, – if you use a cell number in your ad, a cell phone number, first of all, you have to kind of code it a little bit differently so people don't, so the robots don't pick that stuff up and start dialing you. Right. Um, I haven't had that happen, but others have. And so I just, I always code my my phone numbers. Maybe instead of a, a two, I, a number two, I'll just spell out TWO. But anyway, I'll, I'll put in there call or text. Oh. If you have a question or want to come up and take a look and you'd be surprised, you know, I kind of fought it for a long time, but texting is really prevalent in today's world. <laughs> yeah. Why not give your person a very simple, easy path to communicate with you? Not just the reply function in the, in the Craigslist ad, give them a phone number, give them a text number. Um, and I do that with a lot of my little stuff that I sell around the house, uh, a call or text and, Almost a hundred percent of it's a text or a phone call. You know, it's it's interesting that you brought up text because I've been kind of going back and forth on that as far as because you know uh, on the frontier properties side of it, when I have a customer that buys land from me, I get all their information. I mean, I've got their legal name, I've got their address, I've got their phone number, I've got their email address. Mm-hmm. But typically, I just want to put them into my Aweber uh, customer list, right? And then, you know, occasionally throw out a promotion here, information there. But I do have that, their number. I could text them, you know, a promotion. What what do you think about that? I mean, I don't know. I mean, do you really want a company? Like, I don't know if I want a company texting me. I feel like it's so intimate when I get that text. It's like right away. It's an, it's an intrusion, Mm -hmm. Um, you know. If you get the person the wrong day, I mean, you could really upset some people. What do you think? So that's why I go back and forth. But it's also like everyone's going to look at it. You're going to have an unbelievable response rate. You can ask for that permission when you're building your list or when you're communicating with people early on. Um, you know, one one thing we're about to do, and this will be real interesting, is I have a lot of text numbers uh, of buyers and people that have inquired over the last year or so with my brother's stuff, and we've collected this database. So um, I'm about to send out a mass text, and it's going to be real simple, and it's going to say, um, you know, hey, it's it's John from Lewis Homes. Uh, I've got a really, or, you know, really interesting offer opportunity sending you an email later today, be on the lookout, something maybe le- less wordy than that. But okay. basically it's, it's just more of a heads up courtesy text. I'm not but, but pitching them opt- anything. They've opted in. They've, they're giving you permission. It's not just, I have this information. I'm going to, I'm going to text you. Somehow it's in some software package that they've opted into. Is that right? <laughs> no, I've just collected it from the various channels and, oh, okay. and we've already maybe had a little bit of communication um, this will be new. It'll be new to, to send the text for sure. But I think if I, if I come at it from a very non-trusive, more of a, a courtesy heads up, got something interesting I want to show you, I'm going to email you here in a little bit or check your email, something like that. Right. 
Uh, or I could just even more direct, you know, I, I could say something like, and I'm thinking this on the fly, really, because we're about to do this, but um, and I've got to figure it out. But it would be maybe be something like, you know, uh, I've got a special opportunity on my last two buildings. Reply back to me if you have any interest at all. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, you don't want to do that every five minutes. I got a local business here where I literally – I did sign up for text messages. I suppose I did. It's a deli, and I get text messages like five times a day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> come eat here. Come eat here. Special. You know, right, come on. Right. Too much. It's, it's too, too much. much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I get that with uh, my AWeber stuff too. I would get people unsubscribe, and it's always, you know, inevitably, you know, they'll leave a comment. You know, too many emails. So, you know, it's 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 interesting how that works out. But, um, I don't know. You know, there's you don't know what the the special sauces uh, right. sometimes with if it's too little, it's too much, or what people want. So. Um, you just got to test it. And you have to it. test it and, and do it with a small group. And, you know, I, I think having kind of a, a, a core buyer's group, if you were to send them a text that said, hey, I've got something special I'm working on. I wanted you to be first to know about it. You know, look in your inbox here in the next hour. Right. I think they're going to be totally appreciated. Okay. Appreciative of that. I would try that. I think I'll try it with a very, very small group and see yeah. how it goes. Um, okay, so let's talk about platforms. What are your favorite platforms for marketing right now? I love Craigslist. I love Facebook. Okay, so which one is your your? You know, we've been talking about Craigslist this whole time, but what do you like about Craigslist, and what do you like about Facebook? Well, uh, obviously, Craigslist allows you to to place just incredible ads uh, all over the country. There's a gazillion little nuances to that. Yeah, I'd see. That's the thing is when you say that, it's it's not easy to do. I mean, right. because they want you, Craigslist wants you to market in your city, correct? Right. Traditionally. So if you're going all over the country, there's like a science and an art to this, correct? There really is. I mean, there's some advanced stuff uh, we won't get into on this call, but... Uh, you can, you can go anywhere you want if you want to. I actually spend most of my time pretty much here in my backyard with what I'm doing, uh, on Craigslist. I, I do go outside of the boundaries once in a while, Okay. but, uh, even within the local confines, there's so many little nuances to, to, that you can put your time into to get your ad noticed, to get it to rank high, to get it to come up in searches, I'll give you I'll give you a quick example. Most ads, like 95% of the ads I see have zero keywords. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And yet, people use Craigslist like a search search engine. Right. There's a right. search bar and most people just don't sit there and blindly kind of scan through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ads, but like if you put an ad up on in a real estate section, in 30 minutes, you're on page two, at least to here in the major cities, L.A., Orange County, San Diego, San Francisco, New York. Uh, you're you're going to be on page two in less than a half hour, page three in another half hour. And now you're buried, right? Because there's right. a thousand ads a day at least going in. Right. So how do you how do people find you? And that's using relevant keywords. And that's a whole nother conversation. You need to do your research. You need to... Um, you know, figure out what the best search item, search words are for your particular offer, whether it's real estate or whether it's auto repair, you know, or snowman building services. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And and all all the keyword research is is analyzing what people are searching for. Right. That's all it is. I mean, there's books on keyword researching, isn't there? I mean, it's like it's like a whole thing in in and of itself. How to uh, do like Google AdWords, for example, right. is uh, is a little niche people do to make money. They put up these little Google ad, uh, what, what, how, you know, Google Google ads on Google, and they pay something per ad, and then they get paid. I don't know exactly how it works, but I know there's been books on it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, for doing that. I don't know if you ever try to do anything like that, but you don't. But you don't prefer Google, right? No, I've done a little tiny bit of that. It's a 
it's a huge learning curve. I mean, they, all these things are, but um, some more than others. And everybody I've talked to says they've just spent an absolute fortune learning that learning curve in Google. Right. So I've been really hesitant about going down that road. And I've had, frankly, I've had just as great, if not more luck using Facebook pay-per-clicks, which is kind of the same concept. But in Facebook, you can really drill down into your niche market. And that makes all the difference in the world. I mean, I get great response once I get an ad crafted that, you know, seems to have good pull and uh, and drives them correctly. I, I get I get all the leads I want, and I'm spending a fraction of what I would probably spend over on Google. It's, and Facebook yeah. is the number one site. I mean, it's it's the most trafficked uh, website on on the planet. Billion people. Would it be like the third largest country in the world? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, right behind it, India and China. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and yet, I mean, I talked about this in the past podcast, how I was going to do this uh, social media test and really spend time on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. And I have spent more time on it, but not as much as I probably should. What What do you suggest as far as time spent on these platforms? Well, uh, you know, when people want to know about what you're doing and they've kind of jumped into the pool. Okay, who is this land geek guy? Who's this Mark guy? Or what, what about this property, front, frontier properties? They're going to they're gonna go to the places where they can try to pull up some information. And that's YouTube. Uh, that's going to be um, uh, Facebook. They're going to look for a fan page. They're going to look for some sort of interaction. They're going to want to just know about it, right? It was right. the exact same process I went through the moment I bought your course and I started reading it, I'm like, I got to get to know this guy and what he's all about and learn from him uh, as it pertains to, to flipping land. And so I went to those platforms and you had some presence there and you've got uh, obviously YouTube videos and podcasts and, and that's what drew me in and gave you credibility. It created, um, you know, a sense of trust and, you know, I, and I understand, you know what I mean? I mean, right. all that makes a huge difference. If you're not on any of that stuff, it's going to be hard for people to get to know you. LinkedIn, another great example. Um, I probably don't use it as much as I probably should, but right now it's a place where people can go and just kind of almost sort of read a resume looking thing and just sort of see who I am or who a person is. And I've worked really hard to get, um, a lot of my contacts and affiliate and people that are affiliated with me to write testimonials. That's another area on LinkedIn. And we're jumping all over the place, Mark. I'm sorry, but no, LinkedIn, no, no. for example, yeah. testimonials at the bottom, what they call recommendations. Right. And those are golden. And you want as much of that as possible on all your platforms. I, I work with people on their VRBO, vacation rental by owner sites. And some of these people have zero or one or two or three maybe reviews, and they're all good, but they've had 100 people stay in their units, and they're not asking for a review. And so I've, I've created a little letter that I give people, and they, they send it out, and they get reviews 100% of the time, and they're almost always, always, always really, really good. So as a user exploring whether I want to do business with this person, they're going to look at those kinds of things. It's interesting. Okay, so let's say that – I'm a newbie and I just, I have something that I want to market, right? And I come to you and I hire you as my consultant. What's the first platform that you would recommend? Or, do, or does it just, is it, is it industry specific? I mean, how do you, what, what do you typically like to start with? Like, I, like for me, for, for land, I would think I would, I would push people towards the platform of Craigslist first mm -hmm. because it's free. Yeah, I would agree. I would say that would be a, a fantastic starting point. It gets your presence out there in a active mode. In other words, you're you're looking for a buyer. Whereas, you know, if you put up a Facebook fan page, that's going to be more of a um, credibility builder, right? And as same as as YouTube, those are all ancillary pieces to the whole credibility piece. Whereas Craigslist, you can get active right now. Let's get some ads up there and let's generate some interest. Get the phone to ring. Let's get the phone. Yeah, exactly. Let's let's build the other stuff later. <laughs> right. As, right. As time permits. Exactly. So start bringing in 
people. And that's what I did with my brother. I mean, he had zero of this stuff set up just a month ago. And the first thing I did, I came in is I started creating Craigslist ads for, for much of his, his stuff, as well as there's a, another local um, classified, free classified in the state of Utah that's very popular. I use that. And then as we started getting phone calls and traffic, once that's set up, I can put it on autopilot. I went over and started building his fan page and posting pictures and updates and links every single few days. Um, mm. And I started noticing a lot of people starting to hit that now and looking and checking and you know all that stuff. We started to build up his fa- uh, YouTube page same way. Yeah. And I remember when, I, when we first got started, I was so embarrassed to show you my – Craigslist ads because your ads were so much better. I don't think I've seen your ad yet. I thought actually. I sent, I thought I sent you some ads from from my land that my virtual assistant was posting. Maybe, maybe I was really embarrassed. I didn't even send them to you. <laughs> yeah. It's possible. I, did I send you the, the what I said to my my VA as far as how to post? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What did you think of that? I liked it a lot. I'm looking at it right here. Did was a I, was really I missing, great job? Was I putting? Did I miss anything in there? I mean, um, you know, I had the cash cleaner software. Yeah, so and that's something I hadn't used before. Um, I don't know if I was um, if it was causing me an issue or not, but C, you know, C cleaner, CC cleaner. Right. I looked it up. I downloaded it, and I used it last couple of days. It's been seems to you know clean it out real well. It, it definitely freed up a lot of ugly space that was being cached on my computer. Right. So um no you did a, this is this is really really helpful I have it sitting right here on my desk. Okay great. Great. So um Okay so there's so there's Craigslist and then for a Facebook ad how much would you recommend that you start with as a test? $100, $1000? I mean how do you know if you get if your ad's getting results? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Yeah. Wow. I started out with five dollar ads, five dollar budget. A five dollar budget. Yeah. And so, what what is a five dollar budget? How big a pool does that give you? Well, I mean, you're you're like you know, I allocate five bucks a day. Oh, and okay. I, think I got it as high as twenty bucks a day. Okay. And how quickly does that go through? Um, I'll hit five bucks sometime during the day. Okay. And so, at the end of the week, you know, I get a bill for. 25 30 bucks something like that. I can pause my ad if if I if I need to. So you're not locked in. You you know, you can really watch it. And then what I look at is cost per click. So as I'm building my ad, I will I will bid. Here's a little tip if anybody has gotten this far within the system to get your ad to really show in the area that you're selecting or or the interest area that you're selecting. It'll give you a suggested bid. Let's say it's um, twenty-five cents to a dollar ten, and you think, "Oh my God, a dollar ten a bid, a click! I can't do that. It'll you know wipe me out in five clicks." Well, put a dollar fifteen as your maximum bid, and what that'll do is it'll push you to the top of their list. Okay. As far as priority as to when it's going to show, and the reality is you're not going to be paying that. You're it, not. No, it, you end up paying p- cost per click probably twenty five, thirty, thirty five cents. Okay. Okay, but it pushes you to the top of the priority list. It's just a little trick that I learned, and it seems to be working. I've never paid what I've max bid at, at ever. So not what's your what's your conversion rate on uh, on Facebook right now? Well, my what I've done recently for let's say this uh, silver company I was consulting for. I had ads that converted incredibly high click-through rates to an internal Facebook page. It was a fan page all about uh, their product and, and the industry of silver and collecting. And, you know, it was all kind of like an interest group. And, uh, and we drove people from the click ads to that page and encouraged them to click like. And we drove the likes straight through the roof. But when they do that, every time I put something on that page as um, – whether it's an advertisement or an, uh, an interest article or even just a photograph of, of the product, uh, I may have another tagline in there of, you know, if you're interested in this, you know, call or go here. It shows up on their wall and, and that 
it gives me a constant way to keep dripping on them constantly. I mean, I put up something just for fun on the Land Geek up there, and I've had 50 to 100 people look at it and click on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been going great. And, and those um, were people that, that I, you know, got off a click ad six months ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jim Jim's in the Investor's Toolkit right now, but he's also becoming an affiliate because once you uh, invest in the Investor's Toolkit, you can also uh, become an affiliate right away and you, you get 50% of uh of the sale and um yeah i mean <laughs> jim's getting getting free uh free information from me because it's, it's gonna pay for itself which yeah. is great i mean which is really you know the way i like it i think everybody so, wins every it's a win it's a win 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 for everybody so um i know we're getting we're we're down to time what is your tip of the week and I know I'm putting you on the spot, but you've listened to the podcast, so you yeah, know. Yeah, I'm surprised, but I guess I'm not surprised. Right. <laughs> Am I prepared? No. <laughs> be just like uh, Duran, right? Sorry, Duran. Yeah. Um, tip of the week. Well, let, let me give you one that, um, that I use in Craigslist, and this helps create clickable images within your ad. So when you're in your Craigslist creating your, your copy and you've got your uh, – you're typing in you know, your description of your property. Let's say we're doing property. Uh, you can then embed some code where a photograph shows up. And so I use – first of all, you take your photograph and we're going to place it on a photo bucket or a Flickr account. Okay. They're free. That's not my tip, by the way, but um, – I think most people can get that far pretty easily. Just sign up for a photo bucket account. It's free. And then you can upload as many pictures on there as you want. And then when you click on that picture within photo bucket, it gives you the option of a few different tags or not tags, but um, codes. I would click on the HTTP forward for www. In other words, what's the address of that code? Right. It's copied to your, your clipboard at this point. And then here's the tip. Go to a, a website called MySpaceGens. MySpaceGens. G-E-N-S dot com. I'm going there yes. now. MySpaceGens. Okay. Generators, and, codes, layouts, games, graphics, image uploader. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a crazy site. The only thing I've ever done on it is uh, right there at the top, Link Generator. Okay. Link and, Generator. Yep. Link Generator. And then right in the middle there, it'll ask you, is it a text link? I toggle that down to image link. I put my URL on the right that I just copied from my photo bucket. I place it in there. And then if I want them, when they click that picture, if I want them to go to, say, my, my land website. Right. Right below it says click options, link URL, type in frontierproperties.com right there. Okay. And then toggle from same window to new window. Okay, I, so I'm doing that now. So I'm going new window, and then I'm putting in my link. Mm -hmm. And hit submit. USA.com, submit. And then oh, there'll, and there's be a, a code. there'll be a code. And you just grab that code, copy it, okay. and place it right in your Craigslist ad. And what will happen is that photograph will show up beautiful, big and beautiful in your ad. And if a person clicks on the photograph, they'll go to the website that you designated them to go to. Wait, Jim, I did something wrong. It shows href and then the code, my, my website, font size, and then target equals, and then it says blank. Is that where I put the, the blank is? Where well, you, you I, probably didn't put a photo bucket yeah, uh, yeah, link. Yeah, yeah, I didn't put a photo bucket link in there. Okay, that's what I did wrong. Okay. So this is really easy and really it, it totally is, yeah. You know what's funny is there's actually – on Fiverr, people learn how to do this for five bucks. Like this guy has a Fiverr gig that's uh, incredibly popular just teaching people how to do this, how to make clickable uh, ads in Craigslist. I'll send you an invoice for $5, okay? I'll pay it. It's <laughs> fine. That's great. Yeah. Um, what was So my tip of the week is also going to be, I'm stealing it from Jim. It's, okay. <laughs> uh, the hit, what was it, hit counter? Oh, yeah, Hit Counter. HitCounter.com. And you like that? I love it. And what Hit Counter does? Hit Web Counter. Yeah, Hit Web. Okay, yeah. www.hitwebcounter.com. 
com, and it just creates it's free and it just creates a little uh hit counter for craigslist in this way you'll know and I, you know i was going to ask you this do you do page views or unique visitors on this website page views you do page views okay so you just you just put in the page name and you can create the starting count number of digits you create a category and then you get your counter code and you just put that in your craigslist ad in this way, you'll know how effective your ad is and how many people are looking at your ad. And if it's, you know, you do a split test, right? And you can see if, you know, this, ad, this uh, subject line is doing better than that subject line. And you just test it in your, uh, your categories. Is that what you typically do, Jim, with the, with the hit web counter? Yeah, uh, th there's been a few... A, a word of warning on a lot of these external links like photo bucket, Flickr, hit counter. Sometimes uh, Craigslist will identify a URL and ban it from their site. So I've had that happen with uh, another kind of click counter that I was using and um, it, 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 they shut the guy out. This seems to work so far. And so I use that. I embed it at the bottom of each of my, of my deals so that um, – or at the end of each of my ads. And then I can just go in and look and see how many, how many hits has it had over the last day. All right, fantastic. So if I wanted to hire you to manage my <laughs> Craigslist campaigns and my Facebook campaigns and my marketing campaigns, how do I do that? What do I do? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, well, I, I guess uh, we should probably talk. And I, I, I'll be honest, I have an extraordinarily busy schedule. And um, I, I, I just have a lot on the plate, but I love marketing so much and I love real estate and all of this. So I'm finding time for, for, for stuff here and there for sure. But um, I would say, you know, just give me a call, contact me. Let me see what you've got going, where I can help out, um, you know, how I can direct you. And if, if I need to, uh, to manage something A to Z, then, you know, we'll have to figure that out uh, as, as time permits. So, okay. so, I, so I just go to jimlewis.com and, uh, and learn more? Yeah, I've got that one actually uh, directed, I believe, to my brother's uh, Lewis Homes. It's, it's our company's uh, real estate page. But um, you can go there. You know what I think we're going to do? Is we're you can gonna, put it in the show yeah. notes or something. We're going to leverage Jim's time because he's so busy. Uh, we're going to create a program. And it's going to be a Craigslist program and a Facebook program teaching people step by step how to create really effective Craigslist ads that convert and Facebook ads that convert. And uh, Jim, don't you think that's going to be a better way to, to leverage your time? Well, for sure. And maybe beyond that course, if, if you need one on one time, it'll be more effective for you and cost effective for you and, and what have you. I'm going to get real technical, and I don't mean technical in an over-your-head technical, but I'm going to get real specific and give you guys like the real down and, okay, here's a tip that's going to blow your competition out of the water. That kind of uh, webinar, Mark, when we put that thing together, I mean, I've got – let me give you one. I've <laughs> been working on this uh, in my head and on paper here the last couple of days, but – you know, there, there are ways that when people go into Craigslist and search for them to find you like every time and put you at the top of the list every time. And it that way you don't have to keep posting ads 50 times a day, which you can't really do anyway. Right, right. Yeah. But, um, but there are some little tricks there that nobody does. I mean, one in a gazillion know how to do that. And, you know, that, for now, that's great. I mean, that's we're not going to have competition. It's fantastic. So listen, email me or send me a comment if you're interested in that course. Um, it's going to be uh, three courses, right? So you're going to have the Craigslist course, you're going to have the Facebook course, and then you're going to have the bundled if you want both, Craigslist and Facebook. Okay. And, uh, and so email me now um, after you listen to the podcast if you have interest in learning more about how to uh, use these tips that Jim has mastered to really uh you know get your marketing to that next level on these platforms and uh you know be so much more effective and save you so much time and money uh with virtual assistants and 
you know, trying to figure this stuff out, and not getting your your ads ghosted, and not having ineffective ads. Mm-hmm. You know, just you know, you could spend a thousand dollars testing ineffective ads, not knowing what you're doing. It's like what you don't know, you don't know, which uh, is a killer in business. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, one hundred percent. All right. So if you guys would uh, leave us a comment, but uh, do me a favor if you want to learn more, download the Passive Income Blueprint at my site, www.thelandgeek.com. And of course, uh, as always, Duran would kill me if I didn't mention ruralpropertyfinder.com. List your, list your property there. See, Duran, I'm giving you a shout out. And uh, look, buy some wholesale land. Why not? Frontier Properties, USA.com. Jim Lewis, Dana Point, California. I know you want to hit the beach. Thanks so much. <laughs> For uh, taking the time and thank you sharing with us your your Yoda like wisdom <laughs> in uh, in these marketing platforms, I really appreciate it, Jim. Yeah, you're so welcome. Having fun here for sure. All right, if we, you know we sh- we should do another podcast soon about just Facebook because we kind of hit just Craigslist today. Yeah, what do you think? Absolutely, let's do it. You'll uh, you'll you'll schedule me in. I know you're busy. (laughs) Of course. Can we we get it in in August? (laughs) Yeah, we'll get it next week. All right. Jim Lewis, I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, see everybody next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.